Hey everybody, thank you for listening to Filling in the Gaps. Be sure to check us out on our social media pages, at Filling in the Gaps. From there, you can get updates on show releases and anything special we may be doing. Sit back and enjoy the show. Should be a lot of fun. Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome out to another episode of Filling in the Gaps. Uh, Filling in the Gaps is a show where myself from Ohio, hi, Rich here, and Cameron from down in the biggest, the biggest and baddest state of Texas. Uh, each week, the two of us take a random scenario and a random theme and mash it together into a hopefully quick and easy encounter for you to run during your next game night to help you guys fill in the gaps. The two of us have DM'd before, the two of us have played before, and we know it is tough to play week after week after week. So we hope that through our random brainstorming, we can help you guys to bear the burden of creating that story and hopefully give you guys some NPCs, some one shots some enemies that you feel like you can turn into something great for your players. Um, So, Cam, you want to tell them a little bit about what the show structure looks like? And if we have some shout-outs, let's do that, too. Yes, yes. First off, let's do structure stuff. So, first and foremost, we're going to start the show by doing sort of a inspiration-esque, hey, who do we like? What kind of things should we be following? All that kind of stuff. Uh, we go into our world famous segment, Shall We Rule? And determine our themes and scenarios. Then we sort of set the hook for our players, line out the world building aspects and the plot and the skeleton of the story. Then we breathe some life into it with some NPCs, interactions, personalities, mechanics we can use. And then uh, we do a little bit of a story synopsis. This week it's my turn. I'm a little bit nervous. The Just pressure's bit, on. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, but yeah, beyond that, uh, that's that's pretty much it, though. It's, 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 it's an easy show. It's so um, cool. Now, I wanted to say thanks to Dun348. Uh, dun, you, dun, dun, dun. They recommended that uh, we need to sort of pump up the, the volume. Um, Q Space Jam music I don't know the words that's pretty much the that's actually verbatim I thought that we'd have to cut your voice because that would have given us a copyright flag yep so sorry guys yeah. sorry Warner Brothers <laughs> um thank you though we are gonna pump it up for sure so that you can hear some sweet ASMR goodness and we can mm. talk about uh Done. Rolling our dice. Love you. We're gonna mm. enjoy. You're one of our stuff. favorites. Enjoy. Love you so much. Fantastic game. We're playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so thanks, so, man. Because seriously, that's that's not easy to. Because when you can hear it, it's not always what you're hearing. You know, like I, I might be able to hear it properly, but that's I deep. might be making someone else's ears bleed with my editing. And plus, that's just deep. It's not what you're hearing, man. It's what you're hearing. Man. You know what I mean, man? That's deep. Yeah, so let's I talk inspiration. I smoked a bunch of peyote, though, this week. That's oh, what inspired I mean, that, me, actually. It happens. It happens. Yeah. So let's talk inspiration real quick. What has inspired you, Cameron, this week? What's something uh, new you watched or read or saw or dreamed about that inspired you? Something I dreamed about. Um, Careful with that one. I shouldn't have asked this question. <laughs> it was you, Rich. It was you. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. It was <laughs> new new Fever. listeners are getting a very different the vibe shadow. off of this uh <laughs> they're like filling uh, it what gaps are you guys filling in oh uh, yeah that's what this show is all about guys we've been joking for six weeks it's all about me and rich and our love mm-hmm. for each other no um no honestly and this is not a joke but uh i wanted to say rich you inspired me this week oh i, I was inspired by I don't you know how or why was it my drawing of you as a sphinx you did draw me as a sphinx. No, that horrified me, and poor people had to see that. That's in their memory. There's going to be, like, a guy 30 years from now getting, like, a little bit of a breakdown from a psychologist, and he's going to be like, what's going on, man? Tell me. And he's like, I just keep seeing this bald man licking his arm like a cat. I don't get it. I just it don't happen. get it. No, um, the reason why you inspired me this week is because... A lot of your passion is sort of what drove us to do this in the first place. And your 
passion for storytelling and your passion for uh, this entire game. Well, this I say this game as in D and D, but any any role playing game for that matter, um, it's it's contagious and there's a bit of excitement. And so with that, I, I view that as the way that we should always approach our games with our players and how we should always approach how uh, we're treating our stories with a sense of excitement, a sense of wonder, a sense of curiosity, um, a sense of just really just trying to have fun with it. Uh, and you embody that. And so I wanted to personally actually sort of take us off the rails for a second and ask you what what really makes you feel this excitement? What 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 do you feel gives you that that excitement, that prompt, that Oof. that sort of feeling? Because uh, it's contagious to me, at least. Um, and and so yeah, I wanted to tell you that at that the very is least. A, uh, that is a good question, man. I've never had to think about that before. It's always just come. I don't know. I've always just liked storytelling. I think mm-hmm. even from when I was like little, uh, might have caused some trouble when I was really little um, because my parents always got a lot of stories about why things broke or where my brother was at Um, (laughs) but I'd say for me at least hold on you can't gloss over where my brother was at it's like where where's your brother he's on the he's on the roof yeah how did he get on the roof Essentially, I mean, uh, hey, he was my little brother, and sometimes it was easier just to kind of tuck him away in the corner than to watch him. So, you know, <laughs> my, like I said, my parents didn't always appreciate my uh, responsibility in storytelling. But nice. I, I think for me, though, I, I've i kind of always figured that as the DM, it can get really exhausting um, telling your stories week after week, and it can get really exhausting um, just shelling out these ideas And constantly having to feel, I don't know, for me, DMing is something I never really turn off. Like, I don't always get a chance to sit down and write and brainstorm and do this Mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. But it's something that I'm always constantly thinking about. And I've spent a lot of time thinking about my own agenda of writing stories and, like, characters I really like and things I really like. And portraying those to my players and them kind of just completely, like, sidestepping around them to do their own thing. Right. So learning from that, I started saying, okay, well, I'm just going to kind of take the back seat then and start writing stories that I think that they will like, which sounds so cliche if you've spent any amount of time on the internet researching DMing. But I can really say the the moment of creating stories and writing these stories that your players want to play through, man, it makes you come alive because yeah. you, you do these little things that you think are no big deal. Like you bring back this character or even like a little token from someone's backstory and all of a sudden you see their face light up and they're like, what? That thing? That thing from my backstory's here? And they they love it so much. Yeah. And you as a DM sometimes feel like, I have done really nothing. Um, yeah, sure, I'm glad you enjoyed that. I really planned for this reaction. So for me, that's been one thing for, for my players. Um, from a player's perspective, I love to do that for them and it's made right. me feel like putting that time into my stories, um, man, it it's, it's never seemed like a waste because of, of what it brings out of them. It's like crack. It, it really is. Yeah, man. I mean, and I've done like an excessive amount of crack in my life. So you like, know. <laughs> copious amounts of crack. Like I've completely Just ruined my house. marriage. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. my whole it's family. All true, guys. They it's don't all like true. me. Nobody likes me. Honestly, you found me on the side of the street. You were walking through Texas one day. You just yep. decided to ride your bike down to Texas, and we're like, hey, look, homeless guy. And I was like, I love crack. And you're like, <laughs> how about a podcast? And so I said, and you, you know like, what? Sure, why not? And now <laughs> you I'm probably back see on a track. bunch of weird stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but it's, it's truly addicting uh, in all ways. And you know what you said about taking the back seat? I wrote my entire campaign for the West and it didn't go anywhere like I wanted it to. Right. Mm -hmm. I do two play tests for the West, both of them completely and utterly improv and drastic improvements in terms of the, um, a a level of, of fun, the level of excitement, the yep. level of like my players really doing fun stuff. And it's because instead of me focusing so 
so much on the story. I focused on them, uh, and we then they they started to live in that world that that we create, and so mm-hmm. it was a lot of fun. No, what what you're saying though, like it's almost like you're standing on stage, right? Whereas whereas instead of being the director, you are in in a lot of ways the actor as the DM. Yep, you're you're the one the one putting on the show. The, you're just letting your audience being be, be a willing participant or an unwilling that's actually, participant. That's a know? great way of looking at it because I think a lot of times DMs feel like they and I mean you do have to provide the structure and the backbone. Yeah, but they feel so much like they have to be the director, and then they feel terrible when they're you know out there shouting directions to their quote unquote actors, the players, and mm-hmm. the players are doing their own thing. But like what you were saying, when you realize that kind of the players are the directors, yeah. like in, in your story, the players should be major characters. That's that's why they're coming together. Um, and if you let them do that, not meaning that you let them be immortal and get away with everything, but when you let them kind of direct the story and you kind of fulfill the role of acting like 10 or 15 feet out in front of them, um, man, you're going to you're going to have a lot of fun. I guarantee it, yeah. it will take some practice. And I've heard this from. You know, Matt Mercer, Matt Coville. I mean, me and you are great at ad lib, so it comes naturally to us. But if taking an improv class or watching some videos on improv will help you to improve your feeling comfortable improving, then I'd say try it out because it will pay off. Yeah. And it throws you out of your comfort zone, which is uh, something that's like um, hugely important to be. Oh, yeah. You should not be in your comfort zone when you're DMing. Nope. You should be excited. You should be happy. But yeah, that's why I was inspired by you because like that mindset, that mentality, your personality towards this world that we love so very much, um, it drives me to want to do that kind of stuff more and more and more and more. And I literally find myself at work going like, I wish I had more people to play DN, D&D with and I wish I had more stuff to do with friends and things like that because it's Mm -hmm. just such a wonderful world and i unfortunately grew up in a in a place where if i was to play dungeons and dragons let's say in high school when i was a you know an athlete playing football and all that kind of stuff yeah exactly it was so i i feel like i missed out on such a huge portion of my life like this awesome thing got introduced to me at 27 years of, of age Mm-hmm. And I was like, I missed 10 years of doing this or even 20 years of like living this really cool world that I didn't know existed. And you hear that, kids? Being fat and nerdy in high school can pay off. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just fat and strong. That was all. <laughs> oh, that's, see, that's, the ultimate, that's the ultimate goal is to be fat and strong. Yeah. I, uh, I will tell you this much. I... I took it to another level, though. I would, because I played tight end, so I had to eat all the time. Like, I was oh, always yes. eating. Um, I would go, our lunch lines had fruit roll-ups, and I would, wrap, I would wrap the fruit roll-up around a spoon and then eat a slushie with that spoon. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. I'm doing I, this I, after uh, this episode. Yeah. I, I had people looking at me, and I was like, don't, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't right. judge me. Sit down. <laughs> You can sit down right up, bro. <laughs> and then they just went back to playing D&D, being super happy, and I'm over there just being a pissed off jock. That's what it is. This is how my life's uh, ended up, man. And that's how I got into crack, everybody. Uh, Rich, what, ins- <laughs> what inspired you this week? Um, actually, it was a video I watched, It was, I think it was last night, um, by, we recommended them last week, the YouTube channel, uh, channel Just Right. Uh, okay. They actually released a new episode on... And don't, don't, I know every week I say something that makes you guys want to riot, um, but it was on why the newest Star Wars movie, um, Episode Eight, was a good movie from a writing perspective. Um, now, hear me out. He, there are some things where he's like, okay, we have to address the elephants in the room. But he went over um, three of the main characters and how both of them, because of other characters' intentions put into the stories, constantly had to be pulled between what those characters wanted and what those characters needed and for me looking at that and being in the process of like writing a few different stories right now for different players uh you being uh one of them thinking through the idea of how can i create moments and npcs and and these things that pull players and pull characters between what their character wants and what their character needs Mm -hmm. um so i would check it out it's his newest video 
Um, it has old Luke Skywalker on it. It's fantastic. Uh, if you have nine minutes to spare, pause our video for nine minutes, watch it, and then come back, please. Um, don't leave us because he's so much better than we are. But <laughs> just kidding. Just no, kidding. He's, he's definitely not. He's definitely not. I mean, have you seen us? Yeah. You have have you seen the Sphinx picture of Cam? <laughs> That's only half of what I look like in real life. Yeah. So but true. the other half of my body is a goat man. Ooh, just wait it's for a full next size, fully sized goat man with like a head and everything. So that's just the bottom half of my body is another goat man. Oh, just Which wait is... for the next picture I'm drawing. <laughs> yeah. I feel inspired. Hey, um, before we do the the thing that we do, um, I had a question. So I saw this on Reddit the other day, and okay. I, it was interesting to me. Um, I, I saw one of the DMs. I follow uh, it's DM Academy. Uh, we, yeah, we follow yep. DM Academy. They're a lot of fun. There's a lot of really cool questions in there. There's a lot of really interesting conversations. I would definitely check that subreddit out. It's it's a um, great subreddit. It's a really 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 good. Um, maybe not the best for posting. They don't like a lot of self promotion, so we can't really share a lot there. Um, but the, it's definitely great for just interacting with other DMs and learning about their stuff. But one of the DMs came up with a question that said, I have a player that doesn't like my story. Hmm. And that player has told me that they are going to willingly sabotage my game until we play a story that's more fun. I'm friends oh, with this I'm friends with this person and they are have been longtime friends and longtime players of many games that I've played before. What should I do? And my initial reaction was um Absolutely, within the first ten minutes of the game, just murder the player, murder them <laughs> like, as fast as you possibly can. And I'm talking like you can take well, you could take your time. You could sort of drag it out, you know, slowly break them down. Um, but all joking aside, you have to kick that player out of that game, right? Like that's not man. I, how many other are there any other details? Like how many players are in the game? Like or three or four. All the rest of them were enjoying it. You know, I'm I'm sort of paraphrasing because I'm not looking directly at it. Yeah, um, I just found this super interesting because like there was like the diplomatic side of me was like, okay, take them aside and be like, what type of game would you like to play? What type of story would you like to be told? And all this kind of stuff and understand that kind of thing. But at the same time, someone that says that to you, you've got to have some backbone, right? Or is it? Yeah. And I, I, I mean, I let let's assume that we, you know, we believe the best of the guy saying that. Maybe the guy posting made it seem a little bit more intense. But Correct. at the same time, like, I don't know. And I think that's one thing. It, it's one thing when it comes to the to, to the players and DMs who play this game. D and D is best when it is a selfless affair on all regards, from the DMs yes. to the players, like the. Yeah. And I think the problem is, is when we write our characters, when we write as, as players, when we write, we sometimes can get very self selfish with like, this is what I want my character to do. And this is what I want the moment to be like. Um, but you have to remember that you're you're sharing the spotlight with, you know, three, four five other people. Man, I, I would hope and I know this is difficult from someone who literally has gone into a spa- like a full body spasm during a conflict encounter before. I hate conflict, which might surprise some people, but I hate it. You have to be able to to go up to that player and to say, "You are not the only other person at this table. I would love what would you like to see and I will try to include it as much as I can, but if if the three other people are enjoying it, I would hope that you would find a way to enjoy it too." Yeah. Um and not like just blatantly sabotage it. That's just ugh. Um, or maybe See, just be like, it's only going to last for a few months anyway. Just like, just wait until it's over. Ah, man. Here's the thing. First off, um, what you said is you've gone into spa- a spasm before because of a Dude, conflict. That's I crazy. it was like it was like five years ago, and wow. I had I had spent so long in my life avoiding conflict because I just. If, if you guys are big into personality tests, um, I recommend taking – there's a book out there. It's like $15 called Strengths Finder. Um, they are like the people when it comes to personality and strengths. Um, and one of my top five, which is a, a, you know, a great thing to have, is harmony. I love and can understand when a room is uncomfortable because of social elements, mm-hmm. um, which is a great tool for me being – you know, in the, in the line of field I am working with, like, kids because I can be like, that kid's uncomfortable. I think I know why. Let me help fix this. But the backside of it is 
I, I can hate conflict so much um, that it just like it makes it wasn't like I was like literally I was just like shaking like I just like terrified wow. shaking. It wasn't like full body spasm like someone put my wallet in my mouth to keep me from biting my tongue. Um, <laughs> it was just it was just it was a tough, tough moment. I'm, I'm better, but it's yeah. still hard for me. But well, that's yeah. crazy, man. I, I well, that's that's I learned something new about you today. Um, so I'm the that's funny because I'm sort of the yin to your yang or vice versa. Uh, I, I welcome conflict in mm-hmm. my life. Uh, and I'm mm-hmm. not saying that I'm like, bring it on. Let's go. Punch me in the mouth. Um, what I mean is I don't I'm not a, I'm not afraid of it or anything like that. Yeah. But that can also be taken as abrasive at times. Um, because if if I was in that situation, I'm straight up telling that player, hey, listen, bro, don't be a dick. All right. Like, don't be a dick. That's, yeah. This is as simple as this. Like, I, I yeah, you and that's you what have, I need to do. Well, I mean, no, not always because he could I could stop him from playing or her. Excuse me. Let me let me make sure to put that down because w- this is not a gender exclusive uh, club true, when it comes true, to D and D. A lot of different people play D and D. Um, well, I'm only speaking because obviously I'm a guy and also that's how I speak. But um, at the end of the day, like you can't just if I ruin their. D and D experience. I've taken D and D away from the world in a way, or I've taken mm-hmm. role playing games away from the world. No matter how much of an asshole that person is, there's a way around it. And so that mixture of strength, but at the same time, firm yet you know understanding, empathy, compassion, stuff like that. It's it's very important. But man, I would have it a very hard time. Especially if it was some like little pompous guy that just thought he knew it all, or he, you know, he thought they was better than everybody else, or something like that. I just I would have a hard time not telling them to go to hell, <laughs> to, to put it to put it blatantly. And, yeah, and the better the the hope would be that, you know, you'd have that that conflict with that person, and I don't know. Hopefully, they might have to take a week or two off just to cool down. Then you invite them back. But man, yeah, I, man, I. My uh, my heart goes out to that guy who has to deal with that. That, that I know, stinks. man. I felt for him. I don't remember your Reddit username. Otherwise, I would uh, I'd give you a shout out here because that sucks. But hey, good luck. Hopefully, it went well. Maybe I'll go try to find that comment and see if it went well or not. So uh, that'd be interesting. But hey, Rich, I got to do. I I, I I got a question. I got a, I got oh, a yeah? question. Hey, man, yeah, what's up? Shall we roll? Let's do it. Here we go. Alrighty. I want to see how week, I could hold that out. This week, I am... Oh, wait. Keep going. And now we home and people, People's ears just exploded from the beauty of that. And then we do that... Uh, that song you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yes, please. Yeah. And it sends, a, sends filling in the gaps off into space. All right. So this week, I'm themes. This week, you are scenarios. All Ready? right. Well, let's go ahead and do this thing. Thank you, Eddie. All right, I rolled a mighty 17. I rolled a 12. So we're at a high-tech city. Think like Judge Dredd sort of type of okay. thing. Okay, okay. And a 17. What are we doing? Oh, yeah, I forgot you're not in front of a computer right now. So you're all, hmm, all mm-hmm. right, well, we are 17. That is the scenario. Uh, our, oh, this is actually really good. We're going to charge the batteries. Ooh. So we we've got to charge the batteries. You got to keep them charged up. Got to keep them going. Have you ever done a, a campaign like this before? Um, wait. I'd say like my my third or fourth ever session had a a actual timer on the table. I can't say it went well, but I've always wondered if I could do the idea better. So I I that's why when we made this list originally. Also, mm. please send us recommendations for thing to put, things oh, to put on yeah, this list. Oh, yeah, we never we're, talk we're about that out. to y'all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are sitting at roughly eight more um, additional replacements for each of the themes and scenarios. If y'all have extras, send them our way. Um, we put your name next to them, and we also um, mention you during it as well. So like, if we get that scenario or that theme and it was recommended by you, well, you got a call out, and Rich sends you two thousand dollars. Yeah. Cash? Yep. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 And just let me go rob a bank real quick. Um, oh, I'm sorry, FBI. I mean, let me go not no. rob a bank. It's go schmabashmank. That's schmabashmank. 
<laughs> Shmama shmank. That's good. That's you Wink. Do. <laughs> um, but okay, high tech city charging the batteries. This is perfect, yeah. man. This is such a good idea. Uh-huh. Um, and once again, this is something where it could be fantasy or sci-fi. Yeah, um, it could be in any genre. So let me ask you, Cam, when you think of a high tech city and charging the batteries, what are things that you think of that that battery is powering? I think that the the city is um, when I when I picture it right away, it's sort of like powering a shield. Ooh. Covering the city. You know? I like this. You know what I mean? And so like yep. if you don't keep that up, there's say like say there's like this massive world and maybe it's environmental, maybe it's like a bunch of bad guys, or maybe it's a bunch of you know, aliens or whatever. Um, but if that shield goes down, it shit's getting bad. Like it's getting yep. it's getting awful. And so yep. I'm thinking if if it's a giant shield, you gotta keep that thing going. Uh, it presents us with so many cool little opportunities. What happens when the shield goes down, or if the shield goes down? How are we keeping the shield up? What are the thing? What what outside effects are trying to get the shield to come down? Um, what's or not? And I'm I know I know I'm sort of now taking it less off the batteries, but and more on the shield. But the batteries coincide with that shield, I guess. Oh, exactly. So, yeah. Right. Um, so that's how I see it. You know, I I think that that would be pretty cool, and it gives. Dude time you could do time that way as well yeah because okay you, uh, the movie i'm thinking of is you remember Wait, disney's you said Atlantis. you don't watch movies uh, well this hopefully the fact that it's a, a movie from when i was young will excuse me of that okay. um but do, did you ever see the atlantis movie that disney came out with Atlantis. Um, it was like animated. It was in Disney's weird puberty stage of animating. Oh, that was like the uh, they they were like flying around on ships and stuff like that, like yep. uh, big boats and everything. The yep, guy yep, was yep. like, "Yeah, let me look. Let me look it up while you're talking." Uh, and I, and I, okay, because I think I remember. So there's what about. there's this scene from the movie at the very end. Spoilers. Yes, I do um, remember this movie. Where I, I think it was something with either. There was something where the volcano was going to explode. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so they activated this old, like, magical rune energy that went throughout the city. Mm-hmm. And as they activated it, these giant stone golems, like, spread their arms apart. And this barrier went all around the city. Um, and then when this volcano exploded, it crashed into the shield. Uh, but the city was saved. But that volcano, yeah. it, the, the volcano exploding only lasted so long. So mm-hmm. there's the there's the timer, and D and D has a very you know spelled out, and Pathfinder has a very spelled out. You know, one round equals, I think it's six seconds. Um, that yeah. might depend on your party. Uh, certain spells last so long, so you could have this natural disaster happening that's only going to last for so long. Actually, yes. if you guys have a uh, have Mordecai's Tomb of Foes. Uh, which I'm going to continually shout out because I love this book. I don't know how to say the name correctly, um, but it actually gives It's Mordecai Nikonikon. It's M-Man's T- Tomb of T- uh, Foes. Yeah, it's uh, Tom, think, of, Tom of Fawns. It's my main man's Tomb of Foes. A but main in man's the book, Tom of Fawns. <laughs> <laughs> Tom of Fawns, yes. <laughs> um, but there's four el- uh, elder elementals that are in the book. Um, there's a Leviathan, which is the water elemental. It's like a challenge rank 20. It's huge. There's a, uh, a Phoenix, um, a Elder Tempest, which is like a sky snake. Think uh, Rayquaza from Pokemon. And the nice. Zeratan, which is a giant land turtle. It could be sweet to have this cult succeed in summoning this chaotic Leviathan water beast or this Phoenix that comes out of a like a like a volcano just to steal that straight out of the movie or something mm-hmm. and there's no way you're going to defeat it but you don't have to you just have to keep the batteries up for x amount of rounds yeah and if you can do that then then boom that's that's an awesome way of having this huge enemy yeah. just swimming around it could even be like an underwater city uh-huh. um which in D and pathfinder those things exist if it's in like a star like a star wars or a sci-fi setting i mean of course you get you just have this this dome protecting the city from the vacuum of space but there's so many cool ideas i think you could do with that yeah it's also cool because this is a much more confined episode you know mm-hmm. what i mean like it's yeah. not this is a very specific little moment but charging those batteries is such a really, really cool way to make your players go like, oh, my God, 
What do we do here? Now, um, let's think about, for. let's make a specific scenario. I okay. like the okay. idea of a giant Leviathan water or Phoenix thing sort of banging its head and trying to destroy the shield, right? Uh, yep. to get into this into this world um and so what well i guess we don't really we can't really create an ending we can create two endings right true true that the success and the fail ending yeah because like a success is like obviously what it is but a fail is like are we all dead do we all die because i feel like that's womp womp um I mean, no there could be there could be ways if, especially if this is a high-tech city I mean, uh-huh. I think oh, the yeah. barriers. I, I, we completely disregard it. I'm, that's my bad. I completely forgot about the fact that it's. Oh no worries. I think the city. barrier, the barrier protects like everybody, but I mm-hmm. think you know if if in a failed attempt, you could either be keeping the the shields up for as long as possible as people evacuate into yeah. like more solid structures, um, but you always know that if that shield goes down, um, there are people who are going to die. Not everyone can fit into these shelters. It's like, uh, you know, Pacific Rim. Um, yeah. Like, there's those shelters, but you know not everyone's getting into that. And ideally, you just keep that thing away from the city at all cost. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, but one thing... Go oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, well, I, I was thinking about the... Like, because my mind was, like, starting to picture all that kind of stuff as well. Um, and really what was, like, happening in my mind was, like... Um, is there like as this shield breaks is this giant being sort of falling towards the city but it's so big and the city's so large that it sort of takes a little bit of time um and and creates like this massive explosion you get to deal with that kind of stuff as well like mm-hmm. actually i love the idea you've actually done this before you told me about this about evacuating a city um oh yeah yeah you've done a, a campaign like this with tiles was it tiles that you used yep or- i had a there was an abolith, so I mm-hmm. made a I made a map that was um, I I cut cardboard into tiles, much like a dungeon tile, um, and then I put coins on those tiles that represented how many people were living in that square. So in in this session, um, I had this abolith uh, that was swimming underneath of this this swamp town, and the swamp uh, the town itself was built up on these rafters, kind of like a shanty town. Um, and the Ablith was going through, and as it was fighting, it was it was collapsing the shanty town down into the water, where just giant snakes and other types of creatures would eat these villagers alive. Every tile had a certain amount of change put on it, and the change represented how many citizens were there. So the players were both going around fighting cultists and fighting these mind controlled like slaves of the Ablith to help escort these villagers two tiles and then the tile would get ripped out from under them and they're now deciding are we fighting this thing until are we fighting this thing to kill it and maybe losing some villagers are we going to find some way of of getting these villagers out of here and through some clever uses of levitate and fly and polymorph they ended up saving a majority of the villagers while also uh killing the abolith and it was it was such a shift from what they're used to yeah. Um, and it made them feel so much like, oh, crap, we do have to save these people. Like, they're literally falling into the water and dying. Um, I even had, like, a little bit of, like, if the Ablith himself ate some people, then he would, like, get health back. But it was a it was a cool way of um, of navigating that. And I think That's you super could do unique. That's, like, yeah. unique way to go about it. Hey, did one, one of your players, when they killed Ablith, did they take some of the change that was on the table and then flick it at you and go, keep the change? Oh, man. I wish they would have. That would have been... Yeah. I'm just going to tell you right now, cool. you're going to see some of the coolest things in the world from me as a player. I just want you to understand Ooh. that right now. Ooh, I'm going to be the best. Set. I'm going to be your best player you've ever had. And I'm okay. not just speaking on I'm going to be some over-the-top kind of guy or anything like that. No, 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 my friend. You're going to be blown away by my <laughs> story structure, my ability to stay within my character, my ability to help elevate my teammates to make them have shining moments as well my ability to fail all right rich so okay. if you're listening out there anybody else named rich i'm telling all riches rich is on oh, notice right now shout out to all riches <laughs> yo rich is out there if you're dming i'm the best <laughs> i'm the best you heard it here folks 
we'll hold him to it once we start playing. But dude, okay, so what if going back to to you know our our two ways of running this game, you said the good mm-hmm. ending and the bad ending. What yes. if there was an understanding that the city was going to be destroyed? What if it wasn't, hey, this attack will right. um will be prevented? What if it's not a a you know we can save everyone. What if it's we can only save so many and you've got to give us that time? Charging the batteries gives them that it, opportunity. Exactly. And then, and yep. so that then it could be a, a city under siege and then there could be insurgents that are coming into the city and they understand that the battery is what's keeping the majority of the city up for the time being. Exactly. And so yep. they're coming in. And since this is a high-tech city, I think verticality, right? Verticality is definitely oh, going to be, to be. A, a huge component to this game as well. Yep. Um, but this is where those rounds come into play. Um, I also think about this way. You could do both. You could have at the very beginning going, we're going to save this city. And then if they get to a threshold that you, the DM, have set mm-hmm. that says, like, nope, there ain't any coming back from that. And now it's a matter of survival as opposed to Ooh, I like creation. That. You know what I mean? Yep. 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 Like if I'm the Kinda DM like the and I go like, I, I got like four rounds or five. Let's say let's, I don't know how many rounds would be good, but let's say nine rounds. Not all of them have to be combat. Actually, it's almost imperative that they're not combat. Otherwise, fatigue sits in. But um, like if I'm the DM at that point, I set my state of the battery. If they're below... 75% after three rounds, this is survival mode. If they're after below 50% after six rounds, so on and so forth. Like, I have little benchmarks that I can run off of to make sure, do I initiate all hell breaks loose button? You know what I mean? Yep. Sorry, as you were talking, I was just, like, writing stuff down that you were saying to come back to. Um, okay, so we we love we love Mass Effect, right? Like we've talked about this before. Yeah, we, it's we both one like of Mass the greatest Effect. games of all time, and Andromeda is not canon. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Also true. Um, yeah. But but just I'm imagining this idea of like flying around the Citadel. I'm not sure if it was Mass Effect Two or Mass Effect One, where you were like fighting your way through the Citadel, going like up and down elevators, like free jumping through, like just racing to get to the area you were like trying to get to i don't remember the moment but i remember this idea of knowing that like you just had to get to the next one and what if that was the idea of of these batteries like you get to the first battery it's like a surprise attack because the cultists know that they're going to summon the elemental the cultists also know that for this to be a success they need to destroy these batteries so all of a Mm -hmm. sudden you 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 see this giant portal or this volcano explode and this like huge fiery bird flying out of it and then you hear like the like the alert that like the batteries are going down and people are just scrambling. Wait, make that sound one more time. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna uh, cut so that and then I'm gonna play that because when when I run the scenario. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually gonna um, make a full on song out of that. So, anyways, beautiful. Yeah. But but so you you your party makes it to the first battery and the battery's already down. So mm-hmm. now, like, you've got that one player who's inclined to fix it, who's, like, being defended as the other players fix it, and that brings the power up a little bit. And from there, they can see, hey, there's two other batteries that are under attack. There's another one that's down. Like, yeah. what are we doing? We have to go – or do we stay here and defend this one? And hopefully they'll just be like, okay, we have to get to this next battery. And as they're going, you're kind of like – giving them some time to ad lib, whether they're on like an air skiff, whether they're jumping over rooftops, whether they're running through crowded streets through swarms of people fleeing. Yeah. Um, and especially if we're doing something with elementals, I think these cultists have to be summoning elementals. If you're if you're going down like a tight hallway, like there's got to be like an explosion that erupts off a wall and a fire elemental comes out. And now it's like, shoot, are we fighting this thing? Are we running? And there should always be that idea of Hopefully, there should always be that pressure of like we can't just stick in one spot; we have to move. Like this, we can't just. This scenario has me jacked right now, man. I'm I know, right? Off the charts for this thing right now. Like this is, it's. I, I'm picturing all of this, and it's amazing in my mind. I hope someone else is here with me because I am flying high at the moment. Okay, well, I, let's I'm do thinking about let's this. this real quick. Okay, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, well, no, no, say, no, no. You go ahead. 
<laughs> okay. Oh, thank you. Let's do this real quick. While you're while you're picturing things, while we're in this moment, let's let's think of some things going from battery A to battery B. Let's think of some some things, some scenarios, some obstacles that could be in the way of the party on their way there, or some benefits that could get them there faster. Um, and let's just throw out ideas. We don't have to necessarily like flush them all out, but let's just things that we see in our head. Okay, since it's a verticality city, right? What are the yep. ways of transport throughout the city? Do they have a rail system that flies around the city? Can you utilize that in some way? Mm-hmm. Um, Walking bridges that, too. Like there could yeah. be like things from tower to tower. Oh, yep. dude. Like yep. things from tower to tower. This is going to make that bard and that wizard that actually picked um, Featherfall be like, dude, let's just go across the bridge. Even if we fall, I got you. Yeah. Oh, what about what about actually just have somehow parachuting down to another a platform that's way below you or something like that? Ooh, um, yep. Yep. So a, like you're on top way. of the tower. Like one battery's on top and the other one's like deeper mm-hmm. on the building. Good yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what else? So you've got you you've got types of elevators. Elevators are fun because you can do that oh. little silent moment. Open the door, boom! There's like 15 dudes. Go to town, dude. Go especially get, it, if you have some way of being able to play audio to say like if they get into an elevator and just like <laughs> you just play elevator music. That's just fun. That's just fun. Yeah, uh, especially too like if it's an elevator on the outside of a building. So like. Maybe like something shatters the window or like a once again going back to an elemental, like an elemental like bursts into the elevator like chasing you. So now for like two rounds you're fighting this elemental. Right. Um Yeah. That's... Uh, once again, Sky Skiffs. Sky Skiffs two. Blah, I can't necessarily say that word. Um, but that could be a really cool idea, especially if this is like an air elemental thing. Um mm-hmm. if it's like a huge tornado blowing through the town, air elementals can fly. So now you are you know flying this boat through the sky as these air elementals are like you know just surrounding you and battering against the boat um, um you know i uh i think of bioshock infinity um yeah that, that, that's the game right that's the yep. one where they're there's in the sky city and they've got like the the rails and the hook rail systems and all that so they've got like you could literally battle in like a um it's like a ski a ski cart you know what i'm talking about um yep like where it sh- shifts up a bunch of people to the top of a mountain. I can't yep. think of the name because I'm an idiot. Probably Neither can I. The, so we're uh, the, we're good. It's all that crack I used to do. <laughs> that's what <laughs> it know? is. I'm. It's um, only si- it's only been six weeks since we started this podcast. So that's six weeks removed from a lot of crack. So, <laughs> <laughs> but even like yeah, the idea of like a like a mon- like a monorail system like that, but also mm-hmm. those like hook things from Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, where you're like riding around. That could be awesome. Yeah. Um. Okay, I really, I, I'm just, I'm ecstatic. I, you have I, to have some, like, go ahead. No, no, no. I want, I already have, this idea has been in my head for like five minutes. So I want you to make sure to get yours because okay. I'm excited oh, for this. Thank one. you. But even like, you have to have tight hallways too. Um, I uh-huh. like the idea of there being some kind of encounter where you are on the streets and there's just pandemonium, even like throwing out some encounters where like a building's collapsing and you're like, do we run or do we invest around in saving these people from the collapsing building? Yes. Um, or like there could be like a moment of like an inspiring speech or, hey, everybody get in here. Or like one of the shelters that people – I'm sorry. I'm just going a million miles an hour right now. No, one no, of no, the no, shelter. No, no. That's That's the beauty of this show is that yeah. there are moments where when we hit – Two themes or a theme in a scenario the right way, haunted school happens oh, and yes. and stuff like that. Like Rock Shasha Horror Picture Show happens. Those yep. things happen in this show. That's what's so amazing. This yep. episode right here has me off the walls excited. Yes, this is a good it. one. Yes. Um, but so there's a door. Maybe you're running through a street and you notice a huge crowd of people by one of these emergency shelters and the door mm-hmm. is like jammed shut or the batteries are making it so it won't open. So now you're like, shoot. Do we help these people get in? Like, are we gonna are we gonna sit here as there's a valuable you time just on the like clock? Arnold for a, you sounded like Arnold for a second there, and it excited me quite a bit. Aww. Shoot, shoot! Do we help these people? I don't know um, what to do. But yeah, but that's what I got. Okay, so what was what was your idea? You gotta kill a long time NPC. Ah, oh, that moment of that moment of like you. Got you guys get stay. out of here! I got yep. this. Yep, and they're standing yep. by the battery, and then and then and then it's just like dun, 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 dun. so do, so like do, the do, like do, the kind do, of do. scene from um oh, what was that what was the uh, the Star Wars movie where everyone died at the end um, oh uh, Rogue One yeah yeah, yeah. yep you where see, it's like 
You know where movies. he's hacking in and they got to go in. I yeah. only know a few. I quote the ones I know. <laughs> yeah. But a scene like that where like – and that might even be something where like a certain player – wants to be that moment of, I want to save the day. Let me stand out here and fight the swarms while you guys go in and fix the battery. Um, oh, man. Oh, man. that's It sets up so much good quality storytelling elements, though, right there. Because, like, think about it. You have that, like, long-term investment with an NPC, or you have a long-term investment with a player that's just, like, ready to make the ultimate sacrifice because I mean think about it there's a lot of investment that comes with being a player so to be willingly go I might die because of my actions right now uh that's I mean that's absolutely it's just incredible yep I would it, it's the ultimate dream as a DM for a player to sacrifice themselves for, for their teammates because oh, yeah. you don't have to do anything you just let them do their thing you can go take a piss if you need to because yep they're going to be crying. It just writes itself. It does. Now, it does. Now, let me propose we've been talking about charging shields the whole, the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, some other things that you could be charging. I'm imagining in a, in our Starfinder session I'm playing, we're about to get our ship. <clears> so <throat> it could be something where, you know, people have, you know, infiltrated your ship mm-hmm. and they've disabled um, they've, they've they've disabled your weapons, let's yeah. say. And now here comes these other ships that are just swarming around you, ready to take you over. And you've got to charge. You've got to fight through and mm-hmm. charge the batteries on your ship to be able to fire back. It could be this thing again with this city, this high-tech city, yeah. um, where you are trying to charge the batteries of even just the weapons to be able yeah. to fire back at this ancient dragon or this leviathan that's, like, approaching the city. Um, yeah. Because I think one thing that that does that the shield doesn't do is it lets you pull the trigger, and that's a sweet moment too. Yeah, is being able like to pull. That could just even like, be something if if you're, and then just like, like that could be. Do you do oh. sound effects with your players, by the way? Oh, all dude, yes, all the time. I am like, I mean, yep. I'm like doing all kinds of shit. The, My the, wife is like, the, uh, why am I married to you? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you know, you know why. Then I take um, my shirt off, and she's like, "We are at Target, please God." <laughs> <laughs> um, but it could even be both and charging the batteries for the shield, but them them getting to a weapon. And Ooh, what you... if it? Yeah, it's choice. What if you could give them choices? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, I gotcha. Okay. I like es- it. Especially with the idea of they have to do this for so many rounds. Um, yeah. And that's one thing too is don't be afraid of saying like forty or fifty rounds can sound like a lot, like. And it, it is a lot if you think of it from being all combat. My goodness, 50 rounds of all combat Ugh. would be Ugh. so long. But oh when God. you <laughs> yeah, when you let them know that like, hey, if you take the skiff, it's only gonna be it's only gonna take you five rounds to get there. there if you if you yeah. run, it's gonna take seven rounds to get there. Value. Um, you put exactly one, you put round values on actions. Yeah, that's yep. what you do. And you could have a moment where, hey, if you guys stop here and shoot this gun, it's gonna, you know, propel the lo- Leviathan back and you're gonna earn back Ooh. three more rounds. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, what what about this? What if the city's like a floating city? A high tech floating Ooh, city. Like a charging cloud the castle en- or something? Yeah. Charge the engine. Or or yes. like power the Keep engine. Keep it from crashing. Yeah, yeah. And there's All like escape kind of pods and people are trying to get off on boats and you're just trying yeah. to keep the thing afloat. Oh, that could be a good idea too. Yeah. Actually, uh, there was another Reddit post where um, I was reading about how these players uh, had essentially – they had – there was like a god that had killed their own – its own son and then they met with that god's wife on the castle, I guess is what it was, and on like a floating castle. And she started – she realized that, that her husband had killed her own son. So she what? put the castle on the course of the husband at the World Spine or something like that. I can't <gasps> – Yes, I remember reading world. this. Yeah. Yep. And um, she puts it at like high speed and it keeps going faster and faster and faster and faster. And until the, the players are like, um, we can't leave. Like she's going to suicide bomb this. And so they jump out. The DM gives them opportunity, and essentially they jump out on some wyverns, and the wyverns explode and die. And, but they sort of take the brunt of the instantaneous speed shift, 
you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but now the players are like falling through the sky and that's how he ended the scenario with them. And so he that. was a, a, on DM Academy. He was like, what should I do? Should I kill them? Should I have them roll new characters? Should I have a Lord of the Rings moment? But I was thinking like all those little things popped up in my head for the high tech city with charging batteries and stuff like that. What if you need to go kill the engine or something like that? Um, Maybe Ooh, you know, yeah. there's all there's all kinds of options for this man. Yep, I love yep. it. I, I, we don't. I don't know if we have specifically one exact scenario, but my goodness, if you you could just listen to this episode, you can just dip your spoon in and pull up plenty of high quality content. Because exactly, yeah. I hope. Was- I hope. Man, I hope to hear some like really cool additional ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like other things from this from this session, because my goodness, this has been this has been a blast. Oh, okay, Cam, anything else this whole entire time that we've been talking uh-huh. that we've put on the back burner because we've moved on? Anything you've uh, you've kind of pocketed for later? Or anything that as we've talked more, you've been like, hmm, what about this? Um, the idea of who to save, not just how many, but who. Ooh, yep, yep. Because I like the idea of. What if you save nobles? Do they present you with like options after the game? What if you Mm -hmm. save um, the masses? You know, like the the peasants and things like that. Do they do they revere you as a leader? Do you become the leader of this town? Yep. Um, Even like going back to Mass Effect One, the idea of like, do you save the council or do you not? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, and, and especially if the council has been kind of like particularly moody or hands offish or looking down on the players, there's this this idea of do we save them as a we told you so, or mm-hmm. do we let them do we let them go away and hope who comes next is better? Right. Um, there are some concerns as well. My my thought is this: um, if like if your player what, is there a chance. <sighs> I might be pessimistic in this, but is there a chance that your players just say, "Ah, screw this city"? Um, there are, but I think even if I think if they do that, then have some scenarios ready where this this phoenix is going to chase them down, or the cult's going to chase them down. Because here's the thing: worst comes to worst, even if they leave the city, um. Even if they leave the city, they they know something that they shouldn't know. And now it's – the cult still wants to take them down because the cult wants to operate in secret. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't want people to know that they can summon this Leviathan to take and, like, just destroy towns. They just want people to think, like, oh, this volcano must have exploded. So there's still going to be this oh. moment of, yeah, go, you can go ahead yeah. and leave if you want to. But, like, they're still going to chase you down and this thing's just going to show up at the next city – so they could escape and even even talk to another city to prepare them. Um, but I don't That's, know. What do you think? Yeah, it's it's difficult because um, um, there's so many like little loose ends that you have to keep up. You just have to have faith that, you know, you're going to. That's just the weather, the storm moment. Yeah, because yep. this is a hell of a no scenario to present some. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> This is a hell of a scenario to present some players with, and them to just turn their nose up at. I I don't I don't see that happening, I, I at all. Especially if you establish the city in a previous scenario. Oh if yeah. This is like a, a glistening city with golden towers jutting into the sky, scraping it open. Like I just to me, this is that seems like such a a cool thing. This Especially could be if a it's great... a hub city. It could be a hub city oh, yeah. too, right? Yeah. Okay. And this could be a great either session one, um, to, you know, introducing some new players or some veterans with new characters, or it could be a great like start to a new arc if you're wanting to introduce a new villain or introduce a new big bad. Um, this mm-hmm. could be a great way of, of doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um I I'm honestly that that's that one I'm like exhausted in a way because I'm like wow that one Good was exhausted. fun yeah it was just like I need a cigarette <laughs> <laughs> I need to I need to sit down after that one Oof, oh, I, might, man. I might bust out some of the old crack after that <laughs> just just a little bit of crack camera don't do any more crack don't just do it just a tiny bit of crack though man just a just to calm my nerves I don't nerves. know how crack how does crack sound when you do it 
That's crack. That's what crack sounds like. I think it depends on how it's used. But this is this has nothing to do with fantasy or <laughs> hey, does it? Guys, or hey, does uh, it? real quick, guys, we're having a new bonus episode after this. It's gonna be how to bake and make crack. Uh, yep. by Cam. So make sure you tune in. <laughs> Once again, F- uh, I'm sorry, FBI. How to schmake schmack? Um, uh, yeah, and schmabba yep. schmank. And schmabba schmank. Yeah, we can't be doing all that kind of stuff. Um, I guess we could we can hop into the story synopsis. Ooh, yes. Which that's uh, all you this week, Cam. <clears throat> <clears throat> the four of you into the city. You've known this place for a long time. You look around, towers scraping the sky, almost as if they're ripping it open. A slight rain starts to pour on your head. Nothing of any difference you've ever seen before. Maybe it's time to head back into your home. Because this is your home. Because you moved in last month. Remember when you talked to your apartment person and they were like, hey, I can get you a really good deal here. And you were like, sounds like a great idea. That's why this place is your home. Anyways, the rain continues. You don't know why. It continues and it continues and it starts to flood around the lower portions of the city. Then you start to see it. A crack in the sky. And then pours out a horrifying visage. A leviathan of rain and thunder as he comes crashing down the city. You hear at the door. Guys! Guys! We need to get the shield up now! We need to get the shield up! Was that pretty good? Was that better than usual? That's sweet. Dude, that's (laughs) sweet. I love that. Oh my gosh, I want to play this now. I'm kind of like, do I what do I change my whole session now that I'm writing? What <laughs> what do I do? How does this uh. This this one was great, man. This was uh just so much fun. Like so much fun. I had a blast doing this one. Um I wanted to hit on a few things uh to tell everybody. First and foremost, I am definitely going to beg. I am not proud and I will do it. Um guys, iTunes reviews help us out a lot, and so Ooh, if do. you have the opportunity to do it, please hit us up. Um, right now, we are at three and – well, no, eight. Excuse me. I do not discredit the f- uh, five-star reviews regardless. Obviously, we're five-star. Love that, you. <laughs> obviously. Obviously. I mean, you know how, There's no such thing as fours or less yes, when it comes to filling in the gaps. Um, but they the reviews help us in terms of algorithm, in terms of putting us up higher on ter- and, and list, and it sort of shows us off to the world. If you enjoy this, then tell everybody about it, share it, review us, let us know. Um, we really do just enjoy every bit of this, um, talking with you guys, mm-hmm. chatting with you guys about scenarios that you've done, seeing the fact that you've used some of the ideas from this show – that's so seriously amazing. Like floored every time I hear it. It's amazing to me yep. that that that's happened, and um, we want that experience more and more. It's it is a drug to us, um, and so it's our we, new crack. It's our new crack. It's 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 word <laughs> crack. It's word and sound crack. Um, we we need your help in that regards, and so I, I stand here as a, a lowly peasant with his hands out, asking for those kind of things. Uh, that's one bit of it. Um, also, I've been working nights. I am shifting back to regular schedule here pretty soon. So Hey-o. our episode supplemental should get a kick in the butt um, in terms of just providing some more written material for you all to use. We're also introducing a new um, sort of side episode that we're going to be bringing out that's just going to be more focused on scenarios that we're running in our day-to-day. And just uh, Rich and I sort of fleshing them out and really just sort of being a soundboard for one another. Uh, if y'all can think of cool names, send those to uh, send, uh, like if a new a cool name for that, you can send that to us as well. That would be super duper awesome. Yep, they'll um, be a little bit shorter. They won't be as yeah. long. It'll be less brainstormy and more focused on, hey, I've been thinking about this. What do you think about it? So yeah. hopefully once again, it'll give you guys some cool ideas for one shots or I don't know, something like that. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, we've got plenty of uh, social media. Obviously, you've got the uh, Reddit subreddit, which is a subreddit uh, filling in the gaps, I believe. Filling in the gaps. Uh, you've yep. got us on Twitter. We have a lot of fun over there. Uh, I should be posting a little bit more consistently. We do generally I'll post it once a week. I'm going to try to hit it once every two or three days just to say what's up. And then, obviously, anytime someone communicates with us, we hit them back. Instagram's a lot of fun. We've been doing a lot of fun stuff with our images on Instagram, uh, getting a lot of good traction with that as well. Um, uh, what other social medias do we have? We have the Home Brewery as well. Yep. Which is YouTube our, our too. Filming. Oh, yeah, um, our YouTube. Which, we don't even – yeah. yeah, YouTube is just it, – I mean it's just the podcast on YouTube uh, version. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, hey, what's up? Um, but hopefully even the, in the future we hope to – I've got some really cool ideas um, for, for party tactics and some other like homebrew rules. And I thought mm-hmm. it would be cool to make some videos in the future for you guys, just outlaying those things, me in front of a whiteboard or, I don't know, something cool like that, you know, pitching yeah. ideas at you guys. Um, but, you know, that's coming up in the future. But we really – Honestly, like Cam was saying earlier today, I know this doesn't sound huge. We hit 500 views today um, or a little while ago, and it was it, – it's kind of just flooring, like you said, that you guys well, yeah, are that's listening. That's only 500 and, views. That was 500 listens just on our audio devices. That doesn't include yeah. YouTube and stuff like that. So we're, Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, um, and that just – I don't know. That floors us. We, we're glad you guys are listening. Glad to be talking with you guys. Fractorum mm-hmm. um, and, and uh, Harvest Heroes and Witten, Dunn, yeah. Heroes of Wit, Wally. all you guys. Yeah. Uh, you guys are awesome. Keep keep uh, keep asking questions, giving us ideas, um, so we can you know profit off of them and uh, not give you guys any credit. Just kidding. Correct. Just kidding. Yeah, one hundred percent. But yeah, thank you guys so much for listening in. Um, we'll get the next episodes to you guys soon, along with some other fun stuff, and we will see you guys on the next one.